Hi, my name is Michael and welcome to Bring Bank Library's Life Skills video series. Today I'm joined by Anthony and we're here to learn about some basic carpentry. So Anthony, the first question you've got is what are three tools that are essential to have in your home? Well, the three tools essential to have in your home, in your home is a hammer, a pliers or a pincers and a screwdriver. And are there, are there different types of screwdrivers? Well, there are two, at least that we know of, two different screwdrivers. Yep. We have the flat screwdriver and we have the Phillips screwdriver. But although it's called Phillips, this is mine. <laughs> what we're going to do now is going to make a joint which is called half lap. It has to be the same width of the stock that we are using. So we can mark that, make sure it's straight, exactly straight by using the square. And we mark the other sides as well. Because we're gonna be using half, we mark half the joint. We use the bench hook to do the cut and we use uh, the hand saw to do the cutting. Make sure we are up to the line. Perfect, on both Perfect. sides. Then we use we go on the on the vise. We don't go all the way in, we go gradually. Yep. Otherwise it can go everywhere. Everywhere. So you do little bits first and then you go to the That's end. That's right. By using the chisel flat, we can pair it. But anyhow, not to go any further, this is the idea yep. of how it be when you have the left joint. You do the same on thing another piece on the other up. piece, which is the opposite, and it will be over there. Brilliant. Now, another joint is when you're making a box, we can use, we call it a mitre square. Yep. A mitre square is 45 degrees, so if you have a tri square, on the tri square, you have the angle of 45 degrees. You make the mark of the 45 degrees. Also, we go line laying down with it. So straight line down. So straight down there. And another straight line on the other side so that we know we are following properly. Now this time, we keep going all the way down. And that's the mitre cut, which will be like that when you reverse the other side. You put another. And then you glue it, whatever you make in the box, hit a frame, you know, it's... That's brilliant. Nice and simple as well. Nice and simple as well. So with the two joints we've done, all you need are the, the basic essentials you mentioned at the start, and you can have yourself a couple of different types of joints. That's right. That's brilliant. Now, if I'm somewhere... Yep. In... I don't have a measuring tape or a ruler. I can use my eyes, but yep. my eyes sometimes can be a bit deceptive. Well, I can go with my fingers, with my arm on me, with my hand, yep. take measurements, say, all right, 10 of this, the other side is two, or the height where I can go, or the height is that. So keeping that in mind, then when I find a piece of paper, I know how big or how wide my okay. stand is. Yep. So let's say that's eight inches. Uh, yep. So I had five over there. So that will be 14 Four inches. inches. The other one will be 16 inches. And the other one might be the same 40. About the same 40. Because we took the measurement. Now, 
I can also use my arm. Yep. Oh, yeah, just about my arm. That's the same. And over here is the same. It's just under my belt. Yep. So that's. That's you can do that without having to have any rulers or any tape measures at home. That's right. But the best thing. The best thing is you can get one of these or or a basic ruler. Or a basic ruler. The last question is: You've mentioned at the very start of the video about a hammer. Can you teach us, I guess, how to hammer a nail into a piece of wood, and then when you've made a mistake, how to take the nail back out again? Well, for a start, the hammer is always held from the very end because that's where you have the balance hammer. Now, when you hammer, always use the wrist. You see somebody who holds it from there, that's not good. That's not good. Some people hold it like that, some people hold it like this. So you, you give it the first go, mm -hmm. okay. you see, there's nice no, and easy. nice and easy, all the pressure is being done by the hammer itself. So it's not you who are, let the hammer do the work. Let the hammer do the work. Now, at times, the nail might be might come at, at an angle. Mm -hmm. You need to take it up. By using the claw yep. on the hammer, you lift it. Take it out. Take it out. Nice and simple. Nice and simple. Or, in this case, we're going to use a set of pliers because we don't have a pincers. Yep. Right here. And that part, you don't want to damage what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So underneath the pincers, always use something. Another piece of paper or something. There is another one too, is sometimes you might have, which we cannot do it all the way, a rusty nail. Yep. And when you try to take it out, the head breaks. Mm -hmm. Anything, even with the head. So what you do is you get a punch, or sometimes it's another nail, and you give it a couple of steps down so that you break the seal that the rust on the nail has formed with the tin. Mm -hmm. And then it comes, it comes out. out. It will come out just like normal. Like normal. Amazing. Perfect. Well, Anthony, thank you. Thank you very much for that. I know that I've learned a lot. Well, we might have to come back and we'll, we'll learn some uh, using some of the bigger equipment. Well, why not? Because in the, in the couple of days, we, ha we have all sorts of power tools that nowadays are being used in the homes. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Well, thank you. And be sure to check out the other episodes of the Ringworm Library's YouTube channel. Thank you.